look at the puppies. Uh, my mother said something the other night when I was talking about the puppies playing and being dominant and assertive and aggressive, and she was saying, what about the love? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the love. Uh, this is what it means to them. Love to an animal is socialization, the physical aspect of communication, the socialness. It makes them happy. This is what they live for. When they see weakness, when they see us being weak, subordinate to them, it tells them to climb, to become something more than just being satisfied. They want to conquer. The conquering should take place among themselves. Conquering, figuring out who is more assertive and dominant than the other without actually fighting is so important. It can become contagious. With dogs that formerly were not uh, playing and, and showing the, the love, so to speak, began to join in and become participants in it. But they have to get that emotional feeling inside of them before it can start coming out. They have to be around that. They have to be pushed, and prodded, and coerced to become part of what's happening around here. That's what this guy is doing. He just got here for boarding yesterday, but um, this is love. The other that we talk about is submissiveness, wanting to make ourselves a part of them by touching and loving and kissing and hugging and rubbing. And that's okay to make yourself a part of them because they want to be a part of you and you want to be a part of them. But you must understand, if nature did not intend for them to do this like this, the way that they do it, this is nature. Nature put this in them. We can't take this away from them and only want them to be domesticated, and sweet and kind and you know, not assertive and dominant. That's not fair. They want to be rough, tough, tear up things, be just dogs. And so I allow for them to be that way. First, we're talking about the puppies now because as you can see, he's just calm, cool, and collective. But the puppies so that they can get everything that they need fulfilled as a dog. And then, once that's satisfied, when I say the satisfaction, it takes place through a period of series of things that take place, the fear imprint period, the socialization period. All of these things have to happen before the domesticated type of understanding that we want them to have can set in. They're not ready for it. Hormonally, the reactivity of their nervous system is too much at this point, and it has to be depleted this way. Then we can start into the domestication. So we got to let them get dirty. You know, we got to let them experience. We got to let them yelp and make these noises and submit and be assertive and dominant and aggressive in some ways. And then once they can fulfill those hormonal desires, then we can start saying, hey, I don't like this and I don't like that. You see, I'm just now starting to tell the puppies what I don't like. But it's time. They have learned it enough from the other dogs to know that when I rear up, it's time to uh, put this nonsense to rest. And when you can do that, then you can have multiple dogs together that were said could not be together and make it happen. We can allow for them to experience those things. And this is what I do here. I mean, it's a messy business. It's a lot of cleaning. It's a lot of feeding. It's a lot of uh, personal attention to each and every dog separately and collectively together. But it's absolutely necessary. Now, this dog, look how he's allowing for this puppy to just climb all over him. This is what can happen when we have babies and kids. Once we have sufficiently dominated and disciplined our dog to accept certain things, then this type of behavior from a child can be taken uh, from a dog. But not until 
the discipline and the domination has been taking place, can they learn this kind of restraint? So important. We'll continue. Lots of restraint. Love it. Well, let's, let's get them all in. Let's eat everybody and start all over again.